And fresh from his challenge against Chris Smith on e-mountain bikes versus mountain bikes, we have got Blake Sampson. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Blake, great you to right? see you. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was a good day, that. It, it was, was really good fun. Yeah. Do you know what? I've uh, I've been busy actually. Set up my own uh, tone business since then. <laughs> I reckon there's a, I reckon there's definitely a business in it. <laughs> you, you might want to get two of them M M8000 Shimano Steps motors. Okay, right. Two of them to pull. Yeah, and I need to make sure that people have got their handbrakes off. I think when I'm towing. Yeah, little bugger. He had his on. <laughs> Blake, it's great to see you come back into the exotic world of e-mountain ah, bikes. I do like it. But here's the question for today's show is, uh, are e-mountain bikes performance enhancers? Clearly, when it comes to towing four-wheel drive trucks. Four-wheel drive trucks, yeah. They, they are, right? Do you know what? I think, yes, it does improve your performance a hell of a lot. I like riding an e-bike hard. Yeah. And I can't ride a normal mountain bike hard like that with the with the help of a motor, you know. Yeah, I've seen you do some massive jumps on mm. bikes. So they do, would they, they do enhance, they maybe help you when it comes to big jumps? Uh, I would say it's way more stable in the air. Right. Okay. Because of the weight. Yeah. Really. But not, not, I can do it on a downhill bike, Yeah. same size. But I guess the whole question of uh, our e-bikes performance enhancers comes down to interpretation because you could say, well, if you just want to get a bicycle physically up the hill, yeah. you could argue that you could probably ride a gravel bike up the, you could probably get a gravel bike up the hill quicker yeah. because it's not restricted by 25K. Yeah. And so maybe in that respect, they're not performance enhancers. Mm, no, but then you could, but I'm gravity fed. So when I get to downhill on a gravel bike, <laughs> it's gonna be a hell of a challenge, that's for sure. But, but I think the e-bike is. Good, good. We'll, we'll come back to the downhill bit in a minute, but going back to the uphill bit, now, our e-bike performance enhancers when it comes to uphill, that largely depends on the rider, right? Yeah, because you and the terrain. Yeah, I mean, you can you can go uphill slowly at a low heart rate, mm. like Chris did in he your did. video. Yeah, yeah. And I gotta say, it was such a good video. <laughs> really, <laughs> really enjoyable. Hey, it was good fun filming that, it was good fun. God, I wish I could do that stuff, bloody hell. Anyway, uh, going back to the uphill stuff, um, yeah, you can ride uphill slowly at a, at a low heart rate, yeah. or if you wanted to, you can put a maximum heart rate in on an e-mountain bike and get up super technical climbs. You can, you can. So I guess the answer is it depends, right? It, do, it does depend. Yeah. But going back to the downhill bit, now me and you went down to Avon uh, early this year, mm -hmm. and we did find when it comes to the downhill sections, you you follow me down some of the flatter terrain, yeah. you pump in the ground, you get huge momentum by that, because I had to overcome that 25K. Yes. But like we found, there was actually a tipping point, right? There was a tipping point. I think the the um, the when it comes to the e-bike on the uh, descending bit, it's way it's nicer and smoother compared mm -hmm. to my one. Because I got onto your bike and I was like, wow, this is the weight feels good. Yeah, it tracks the ground amazingly. Mm. Yeah, I mean they definitely in, in terms of enhancing, they definitely are grippier and more stable on lots of steep downhill tracks. So I think yeah, probably a mark for the e-bike in that respect. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, going back to your video, great video. Uh, Chris obviously had something, something between his, what did you say? He had a lump between his legs, didn't he? Yeah. Some of those tests. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what I liked was that the first, one of the first jumps where you had, Chris had a pedal into it, it was a huge jump. It was, it was a jump to gap. Oh, it was a gap, like that was. You had a roller, roller double, and then you had to gap to a, like a super cross. And know, the, the, one that, the one that the Don uh, uh, cased. Yeah. <laughs> On that same bike, so I'm glad I kind of killed that negativity out of that bike. <laughs> yeah, but I think in, in, in an environment like that, definitely the non-e-bike is going to be up a hundred percent. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. So if you're an average Joe and you only ride on the weekends, I think the e-bike does help perform your well enhance your performance for and sure. We're, and we're not talking about changing your bodies by enhancing your no diet. Yeah? No, you're not training to get to that or changing your blood. Exactly, <laughs> all of that. All of that stuff. Yeah, I think they do help. Yeah, for sure. I, th I think there's something in e-mountain bikes for everybody. I mm. mean, from a personal level, uh, Blake. Last week, uh, me and Brandon we went and did 16 downhill runs. S 16. It was 16 downhill uplifts. runs. In, no, like pedal at the top and then doing the runs. 16 downhill runs is a workout. I guarantee you. Oh, 100 percent. It sounds so, it. So, and I think you forget how strong you become by riding an e-bike because yeah, yeah. you're moving that bike around, and it actually becomes 
quite normal after a while. Whereas when you're new to it, you might, you know, it takes you a while to adjust to that. Yeah, yeah. but it's like interval training, I guess, yeah? Totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so not that I want to do interval training that <laughs> no, much. Yeah. Do you do interval training? No. No? No. You go to the gym though? Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to, but like, so you, uh, we need to pull that, you need to pull that truck next time. <laughs> <don't> you? <laughs> yeah. you need to get them the More squats. squats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blake, Tahiti is the place to go ride an e-mountain bike. Is but, it? Uh, Medi Gabrilages and his crew have taken it to the next level. They've built these insane jumps Look at that. on the top of a mountain. And not only that, they've got a helicopter to not take a drone. to the top as well. Not a drone. No. Water filming, that is ridiculous. I mean, look, it's got everything, right? It's got great climbing, it's got clear blue sea, gold, uh, sorry. Fishing. It's got, yeah, fishing, dancing. E-biking jumps, Blake, come on. I think that's paradise for e-bikes there, Steve. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Uh, now something a little bit more technical and great news that Lightville have got a sort of concept uh, e-mountain bike called an unconditional e-bike, Blake. What does that mean? I don't know what it means, but it looks really, really it good. It does look amazing. 27.5 uh, or 29 inch wheels in it, 630 watt hour battery and a Shimano Steps E8000 motor. I think, Blake, that is a good looking e It looks, in, I like the color. If they keep it that color, it looks amazing. Yeah, totally. Uh, moving on to Italy. Now, Val de Sol hosts the World Cup downhill uh, in August, but before that, they are going to have a short course E mountain bike race, 18 meters altitude and 1.5 kilometers uh, in distance, uh, it seems like a like a power hour, Blake. Yeah, this. all in turbo, I'm guessing. <sighs> Guess all so. in turbo. So it's been championed by uh, ex World Cup cross country racer Marco Fontana, Ooh. who rides for Focus. Uh, I can see that being quite an intense race, and of course, it uh, it comes before the World E Mountain Bike Championships in Mount Saint Anne oh. later in the year. Oh. Okay, time for tech of the week. This is in from uh, Finley Patton, uh, who's built a high, high bike. Blake. As in high, high, tall bike. Uh, yeah. Are those triple clamps? Are those quadruple clamps? I don't know, but there's a lot of suspension there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, it is very high though. That is, that is high. You've got pretty long legs to ride one of those. Blake. Yeah, like basketball player, not me. Yeah? Yeah, no, no. Doddy. Yeah, you? definitely. Uh, no, i got short legs. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm going to bring it down to earth a little bit after the high, 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 high bike. <laughs> uh, my friend Tom Cardi, he is an insane rider. He's a slope style rider, but mm. he's just been sponsored by High Bike, and he's right. just come out with this rad video of him doing trials on his e-bike in urban, the streets. Urban, urban trials. Yeah. yeah. Take a look at all of this. It's pretty fun. I like how he gets up onto that onto that uh, wall. Yeah. The, the the wall, as he puts it. Yeah, yeah, the wall. That one. <laughs> that wall there. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I was with Josh Bryson last week. It's quite a skill, isn't it? Do you, do you actually hop it or do you do uh, motorbike style where you ride your front wheel in and then hop yeah, the Yeah, I don't know. I use, I, I've done a bit of trials on an e-bike yeah, yeah. and using it in turbo, when you give it a, uh, what you call a bitch crank, Right. Do that, and that power, you can use that power. There you go, bitch crank. I don't think you've heard that here on e Mountain Bike Network <laughs> before. Bitch cranking. Bitch cranking. Moving on to trials. Now, you're talking trials. Tony Bow is oh, yeah. one of the finest two-wheel riders in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, he's been riding his Scott e Mountain Bike, and uh, pretty accomplished too, I have mm. to say. Uh, Look at Blake. that. Yeah. That is crazy. Absolutely. He is good. He's amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Climb of the week is your favorite section. It you is. love climbing. I absolutely love climbing yep. on e-mountain bikes. Uh, this is from some guys who went up to, I think it's oh, Kirk yeah. Tree. To, yep. there's, a, there's a trail up in uh, Dumfries, I think. It's called McMoab. Yep. And it's a big chunk Mac? of limestone or is it granite? I think it's, it's granite in the middle of this trail center. And Whoa. there's these guys having a great time. Uh, that, that is riding, amazing. What is actually quite a technical, a technical trail section on mm. e-mountain bikes. Nice one, guys. Thanks for sending. Uh, that clip in and don't forget to send any of your clips in wherever you are in the world uh, whether it be raining snowing sunny sand mud <laughs> grits whatever anything yeah 
Now, Blake, I know that you are a man for building work stands yeah. and, and that, those kind of gadgets to maintain your bike. Check this out from Eddie, who's actually made a stand no to, uh, to, to stand his bike up when it's upside down yep. so it doesn't damage the controls on the handlebar. Because you do, like the Bosch one, you can get that scratched a lot, yeah. especially if you throw your bike up. Now, that is cool, that's ingenious. Yeah. That is uh, what I would call that a hack. I'd call it a hack, yeah, I'd call it committed. Fair <laughs> dues, Eddie. Nice one. Blake, uh, we did a video last week, 16 downhill runs on an e-mountain bike. Had some comments that we shouldn't be riding in the wet because riding in the wet destroys trails. Mm. I'm not sure, so sure. I think that's a bit of a myth. Yeah, I think it's a hard subject to I talk think about. Once you've taken away the leaf litter and the mulch on top of the earth, and once, once the weather gets in on that, mm. that's, that's what destroys the ground. But then, is it actually destroying the ground? That's adding character to the trail. To the trail? <laughs> <laughs> to the trail. To the trail. It's adding character. <laughs> but you could say, I mean, we're just building a trail. I mean, yeah. what about if sheep and deer, do they destroy mountains? Yeah, and livestock. Livestock? It's yeah. not. I mean, it's not like the mountain's going to be gone no, yeah. in four years' time. I see where they're coming from. I think where someone has spent a lot of time building a trail and it's pristine and they only ride it in the dry, then fair enough, you can only ride that trail in the dry. But think... when it comes to man biking trail out in the woods, yeah, oh, it rains all the time over here in England. It so it's actually probably a, it's a geographical thing, right? Mm. I've seen it in in places such as Oregon, where you can't go off the trail, and the trail is very manicured mm. and it's built for certain conditions. I, I get that, but yeah. I think it's definitely geographical mm. when it comes to erosion yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen I've seen places. I mean, bear in mind some of the trails we were riding last week, the roots are left in place. Yeah. Not cut out. They're not cut out. And I've been to some places in different parts of the world where they've cut the roots out. Oh. And once the weather gets in on one of those trails, before you know it, yeah. there probably will be three to six foot uh, yeah. deep trenches. Yeah, yeah. Especially in high rainfall areas. Yeah. Right? Well, like Demo, you know, Demo Forest in um, Santa Cruz. Yeah. Now the flow trail. Now that was shut when we went there only because it was wet. So we respect that. Yeah. Where places will be shut because it's wet. I Whereas think it, over here, I think you're dead right, and I think it's a good point that you put in. It's it's all about respect of different people's trails, mm -hmm. right? Wherever you are in the world. Yeah. Now moving on to a feature that Chris did on the worst things about being an e-mountain biker. Mm -hmm. It's in from Pasca Alexandru, who says flat batteries. Oh no, flat tires. That makes me swear out loud. Wait. Now, ten years ago, my mountain bike was 25 kilos. I went to places hard on the foot and touring. Years passed and I got an aluminium frame, the aluminium rims, forks, stems, nets and bolts. Damn, my e-bike was so light at 16 kilograms. And damn, e-bikes came and I'm back to 25 <laughs> kilograms. <laughs> but you got I, that power to get you there. But if you had a, if you had a mountain bike which was 25 kilos, that's a, that's a heavy mountain that bike. That is a hell of a bike. But having said that, you know, I rode G. Atherton's World Cup winning common sal of 2010 and that was 45 pounds. How much is that in kilos? That's like 20 kilos, right? Somewhere around the 20 kilos. That's like yeah. less than 10 years ago. But um, <sighs> so anyway, Pasca is saying about the weight, uh, but that's not an issue. The issue is Aerocos. Today I got a flat tire and an Aero 500, broken main power cable. So yeah, uh, on the subject of- That's uh, not good news. On, on the subject of software, what does that say? Pine Muster. Pine Muster. You shouldn't Pine. ask me about names. I cannot pronounce names. Piney, Piney Muster. Waiting when the e-bike will say, updating windows, please don't shut your e-bike <laughs> off. Now that'll be a nasty one. Or you get on Mac, you get the uh, the recurring round circle. Of yeah. Oh, that, that would be death, wouldn't it? Imagine Absolutely. that. Yeah. You're at the bottom of a valley and you couldn't get back up. See, I don't, I don't come across all these things. Huh? Yeah. Uh, hey. Keep sending your comments and get involved in the comments on, on the videos. And you know, maybe you guys can help out with some of the answers to these questions as well as us. And get Blake in on it as well. Oh yeah, I'm trying to answer them. Yeah. What do you reckon, Blake? New t shirt? I, I like that. Yeah. You've got rid of the uh, yellow lightning bolt and blue. Yeah, a bit that, more that, subtle. I, I like that. Bit more subtle. Yeah. Bit yeah. more subtle. It's now nice. They come in uh, burgundy and black as well. Oh, I'm sure black. we can get I'm all in about black. black. But guys, check out uh, the shop for all your EMBN merchandise. Merch. Is it merch? It's merch. merch. Yeah, yeah you need threads yeah. and stuff, you know? <laughs>
And it's the bike vault time! <laughs> what is in the bike vault? Do you know what? Do you like bike vault? I do like I bike vault. I love bike And vault. I've got absolutely no idea what's in the bike vault because Chris lined this up before he went on holiday. Chris on holiday? Where's hope, he gone? Hope you're a nice holiday, Maldives, Chris. Maldives, isn't he? Uh, yeah, or Tahiti was getting sent. Oh, if he has gone there. So here we are, we're straight into the bike vault. Darren, who's in Warncliffe Woods in Sheffield, obviously famous for Rocks. Steve Pete's Steel City uh, Downhill. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice bit of rock, Blake. It's a nice rock. We actually, we should be talking about the bike, not the rock. I can't see the bike. The bike is a Levo, and uh, say two, 2019 Levo. That's nice. A, that's this lovely. Nice. 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 Okay. No. You're in charge. Two bikes. A in the brace. Bike a brace. Well, Martin Ashton would not. Um... Uh, uh, no. But it's your show. Well, it's not everybody's show, Blake. True. Everybody's show. It's a brace of power plays, and where is it? It's in Mount Wilson in California. Now that is super nice. I like the two bikes. Oh, oh yeah! Straight in. Ooh! Ooh. Is that Husky? Side on that's Husky a Husky. 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 I only know by the graphics. From Finland. This is Nico in Finland. It's nice to have a Husky. I think that's one of the few Husky Vanas. I'm going to give that a super nice. Super bike. nice. What the oh. hell? What's that? That is in Tasmania. Oh, where's the devils? The Tasmanian devil. That's, that's, I mean, that's a nice location for any. Well, bike, it is very it? nice. Nice. Like, super nice. I think it's almost super nice. Super nice. Super nice. Super nice. That was a giant. Ooh. Now Is that a commensal? We've got a Meta Power signature. That's a commensal, yeah. That is. Oh, I'm getting good at e-bike. This is in Purbright, Surrey. <gasps> now there's a good place to ride an e-bike. Yeah. For sure. Power hour there, especially on them short punchy climbs with some nice loamy terrain. I think that's a super nice. <laughs> No, uh, oh, hardtail. hardtail. Like Plus it, size. Like it, an E Fathom hardtail from Idaho. What do you think of that? I'm trying to see what bike it is. Giant. Is it a giant? Look at a giant on the down. It is a giant, yeah. isn't it? I'm pretty good at these E bikes, aren't I? Not too bad, yeah. That's nice. It's nice. Nice. Nice, nice. Oh. Spot by the fence, Blake. Spot by the fence. You can't see the view. David, yeah, special. It's a bit backlit. This is Spain. It's, it's a in, nice uh, specialized. It's in though. Sarah in Spain. I like the grips on there. Oh, I just wish he would put it up on the top of the hill there, and oh, it would be. Yeah. Oh, He's mean, got. That looks a little bit like like Alec. rubber um, condom things for his brake levers. Yeah, let's move on. Nice, nice. Ooh, I thought that was a normal. What that's a common that? cell, isn't it? Super Common cell Super Team V1 compared to the hub, hub drive. Oh, he's good. I ah. just think that was good. Funnily enough, I can't believe that's total coincidence. I was talking about common cell downhill bikes earlier, and yep. that is a Supreme World Cup bike, which has had a, a hub drive put on it. No, I, I like that. He's adapted. I, I, to me, I think that's quite nice. Yeah, that's in Clithero. Yeah, that's super nice, nice. Nice trail. Nice. I need to take a bit. I need, yeah. It's, oh. it's nice. It's nice. Okay. And this Ooh. is a Lapia Overvolt in Grisdale. Where's Grisdale? Where's Grisdale? Do you know, is that where, is that? Where's Grisdale? Yorkshire. Come on, Blake, you're a man of the mountains. Lake District, <laughs> don't any <any> joking. <laughs> <laughs> Testing you. That's nice. Yeah, it is nice. That's where I'm going on holiday, not there. But really? Lake District, yeah. Whereabouts are you going? Don't know. Okay, so uh, Ennerdale's nice. Going. Sorry. Uh, Norway, myth, what does that say? Cube. What's that say? Acid. No, what's that say? There, look. Miss them. Miss Burkett. Miss Burkett. Norway. Miss Burkett. Miss Burkett in Norway. Miss Burkett slightly lives there. Slightly overprocessed. Nice. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Quite a big house, isn't it? God, he's got some money. Of course, his Paul is giant E plus one pro in, in the Northumberland. Cragside. That no. looks like that's looks that's like a, a, that's a hotel. It's a hotel. Nah. It's his house. Crikey, that looks like doesn't look like it's in Northumberland. It looks like in, it's in some exotic location. That's a nice bike. Giant E1 plus plus one. Hold on, what does it say here? Look. Ah! Exploring. See, you need to read the details, Blake. Exploring the grounds of historic Cragside where the latest Jurassic Park was filmed. My mum does say you must read more. <laughs> That's so that, nice. That is nice. Ooh. Ooh! It's Christian with a Kona remote control. No, I don't see. I, there's no. Where's, it's not remote control, is it? A human has to take that. Oh, it's the brand. Oh, I get yeah. It's nice. It's nice. Nice. Ooh, Ooh I like that. that's I like nice. That. I like that a lot. Common cell Meta Power. Another oh, common cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's a beautiful place. That's I super think nice. That is. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. I mean, I'm not on the camera. Yeah. 
I want to go camping. Where is that? It doesn't say. I'm going to just fall right around to the bike vaults. A lot of common like cells, a lot of common cells. I like, I like that common cell bolt-on machine thing. Yeah, uh, do that to keep sending photographs in into, where do they go, where the photographs go? Do the uploader, just down there. Uploader, what's the uploader called? It's called the EMBN uploader. EMBN uploader. And then we can argue over your e-mountain bikes. Don't forget not to put fences in the shot. Yeah, man, we want to see the view and the yeah, bike. Yeah, exactly. Try stay away from backlighting it. Drive side. Yeah. Pedals at nine o'clock, three o'clock. Yeah, nice bit of light on the bike. Yeah. Don't let the horizon cut through the frame. And don't put your bike far down there. And don't put it too side on either. Yeah. But do so put it side rules. on down the... Sometimes it's about luck. Sometimes mm. it's that shot, but ooh, wouldn't have normally done that, but it actually You're works. You're like, damn, my bike's ass looks sexy. Photography masterclass from Blake Sampson and Steve Jones. Uh, what's coming up on the channel this week, Blake? Well, I've been told that Neil Donahue's done a video for GPS, how you can use that on e-bikes. And it's, with Garmin, it's pretty cool. And it seems that on Sunday, the guys have been listening because Brandon and Chris have been in the mountains of Scotland, uh, finding out how to make your first e-mountain bike ride a great oh, one. I need to watch that. I can't wait to see can't that one, guys. See that. Can't wait to see that so one. So dry. Don't take root advice from Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That is it for this week's EMBN show. Blake, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you very much for the invite. And you know what? Guys, check out the video, Chris Smith versus Blake Sampson, E-Mountain Bike versus Mountain Bike. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. Check it out. <laughs> and if you want to see you doing all those 16 downhill runs, click over there. In the wet. In the wet. In the wet. Uh, I mean, thank you, thumbs up if you like this video. Don't forget to hit the globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad EMBN stuff. See ya.